Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Tuesday call. Every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Pacific, we're here. I'm Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. If you haven't already, be sure to connect with us on social, Facebook, LinkedIn. Hopefully, you have already subscribed to our YouTube channel where this call will be posted after the call. So I am, every Tuesday I'm interviewing either a great loan officer, a speaker, a leader, someone that can inspire you, and someone that can share great ideas. So uh, here at Mortgage Coach, we founded the, uh, the Total Cost Analysis. Uh, we've been getting lots of awesome pictures from mortgage coaches out in the market. This is a first time home buyer in a coffee shop. Love this quote from Dave Ramsey when I interviewed him about a month ago now. Always start a relationship asking about goals and then use the total cost analysis to show them how to hit their goals. So the, the big thing we want to drive with all you members on today's call uh, is after our inspirational story is to make sure you're driving mobile conversations with realtors, with home buyers, every place you go, make sure that you are doing a mobile to mobile share using the TCA to share ideas, share strategies, share success stories. Uh, that is the action that we hope every mortgage coach is taking. Uh, so, so today we have an inspirational story with Sarah Middleton. Sarah has been a, a, I want to say a lifelong friend because it's been over 20 years. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, more than a lifetime. I think every 10 years is a lifetime yeah. in the mortgage business. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're in sales mastery. We're going to get into a great story in just a minute. Uh, but Sarah, good to have you. It's good to be here. It's so good. Well, we, we know that when we had that uh, uh, challenge a couple of weeks ago, it was meant to be to do it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, before I bring Sarah in, I want to do some follow-ups on last week's TRED panel. Uh, so a couple takeaways. And uh, by the way, Rob Crispin, thank you for the nice mention in today's Crispin post. Rob, uh, you know, something that I had forwarded to him. He put a push in there. So all you mortgage coaches, make sure you're a manager. Your leadership team gets this message. It was in Christmas today. But here were, here were some of the quotes that came out of that conversation. And I'm not going to read them all verbatim, but I think the, the big takeaway is proactivity versus being reactive. So when we were talking about tip, you know, all of the best of the best, they're not waiting for the borrower to say, hey, what's tip? You know, that's part of the borrower conversation. At the front end of the conversation, you're explaining total cost. And you're turning tip into a competitive advantage. At the end of the day, as mortgage professionals, we need to understand all the details. But then when we bring it to the customer, it's nothing. It's simple. It's a sentence. You know, biggest mistake I see loan officers making is they're making a big deal out of trade with realtors and borrowers. It's not. It's only as big a deal as you make it. So, so but get really good. Dan Keller did a nice rift on how he's showing the cost over five years in his sales process. Danny crushed it on this call. If you didn't hear it, make sure you go listen to the recording. Some of the scripts I did with Jeremy, where he made the case around tip makes the mortgage decision. How It makes it clear and obvious how important the mortgage decision is. And then this whole quote is tip helps you see that the, mor the mortgage decision can help you build wealth with real estate. So if nothing else, turn that what we think is an industry as a negative into a positive. Which really, at the end of the day, that's what this call is going to be all about. Turning challenges into something that is positive in your life and something that fuels your future. So so it's time to bring Sarah into the call. Sarah, are you ready? Yeah, I am ready. Ready to yeah, rock? We're sitting together. It's so much fun. Yeah. I, at some point, uh, I might turn on the video, but we're broadcasting out of a hotel. Oh, I, no. I don't want to. No, no. Oh, I'm going to do it, Sarah. <laughs> I'm going to do it. No. Oh. Okay. Sarah said no. Uh. We, we won't do that. I walk. I walked over to his room in my workout clothes, and yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay, yeah, we're so not that, doing that. So Dave looks great. All right. So <laughs> so Sarah Vito, the live video. Uh, all right. So our story, my story with Sarah started at Sales Mastery, and it's just appropriate we're at Sales Mastery. Yeah. Uh, today is the opening day. Yesterday was the CEO dinner, um, and my memory of Sarah was like, oh my gosh, who is this woman? You know, it was a it was an event where I think there was at least thousand people in the room. How how much loan volume were you doing back then as a producer? Yeah, I mean, uh, back then, you know, doing a hundred million plus a year in uh, average loan amount. I think in ninety two ninety three was around sixty six thousand. That's in crazy. But hey, here's the thing though. I gotta do a shout out to the team 
I look back and it's always about the team, right? I mean, we have to always remember that, right? right. I had an amazing team. I was very, very fortunate to get to come to Sales Mastery and hear Todd Duncan do the notion of get an assistant. In that was a new idea. That was the new idea. <laughs> I know. I know. This was before electricity. And uh, got this amazing assistant. Uh, she stayed with me a very, very long time. You know, I really didn't have much turnover on the team over uh, 23 years of originating. So I think that's the first takeaway is, you know, build a great team, take care of them, love on them, and give them credit because, you know, they – they definitely were smarter than me, better than me, and they made me shine, and they held me accountable. Well, again, you 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 inspired me then. You know, back in those days, if you did fifty million a year in production, that was like hall of fame. You know, and by the way, it still is incredible business. But the concept that someone could do a hundred million in volume was crazy, and then the energy, you know, just the inspiration energy was was crazy. So, Sarah, you know, one of the things I wanted to do is we see so many stories come out of the media, and usually it's kind of like negative stories about yeah. the mortgage industry. And let's face it, at least from my perspective, the mortgage industry is awesome. And we have so many amazing people that truly have the heart of teachers, truly care about the families they serve, and, they, and we have some crazy stories. I mean, okay. we could really make some movies we around do. the characters, and you're one of them, by the way. Uh, you know, the people in our industry, they're just so amazing. So. Sarah, real quick, so you've been a loan officer, did $100 million or more a year in volume. You've been a branch manager. Yep. You've been a regional. Today, who your role for everyone? Yeah, I get the honor of uh, being our EVP for uh, national production and marketing for Fairway, but really um, we see it as we, we serve our, our, our field. I, I serve our, you know, favorite saying, right, is if you can't serve people, you can't get to leadership. So I get the honor every day of helping our team. Beautiful. So again, servant leadership, it's all about serving the people. So I'm going to flash some quotes, you know, over the course of this, you know, next 30, 40 minutes while we have this interview. I had asked Sarah, you know, what are, what are some beliefs that you have? What are some quotes that, you know, they're affirmations? Yeah. So they, they may pop up out of order. They're not necessarily part of what we're talking about. But I, I just thought that this is what Sarah wanted to communicate to the mortgage coach audience. This call is, you know, it is about personal leadership. Uh, apologize is the bravest first to forgive, the strongest first to forget, happiest old. Hello? Hey, Marcy, are you hearing some background noise? And Marcy, can, can you confirm that you can hear us? Hey, Marcy. Okay, they can't hear. Mar Marcy, are you there? Maybe it's my pacemaker. I know. Hey, you know, Hi, Dave. we I have. Can hear you. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, so, thinking, we're thinking it's my pacemaker that's. Yeah, which, <laughs> by the way, we're, we're, we're getting to the story. So. so <laughs> Dave said in 400 phone calls, mine was the one that shut off, and I thought, well, yeah. my pacemaker. Sorry, folks that are out there. All well, right, here we go. All right. So, so let's let's start with you know how you've taken adversity through personal leadership and leadership and turned it into something. You know, I don't know if you want to say it's positive, but let's talk about overcoming adversity and going strong. So, why don't you tell your story, your adversity yeah, story? Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I think that it's the it's the notion of everybody understanding. In, in our, I'm 56 years old now, and, and um, I'm blessed to have every day be a new day and, and wake up and be vertical, and I'm thankful for that. And what I understand is that in this life, you know, we're either coming out of adversity, we're living in adversity, or we're going into adversity. And people are always facing challenges, and loss can be different for everyone. Um, you know, in, in my own life, I've had some some just huge depths of loss, and it doesn't it doesn't trump anybody else's loss. That is for sure. But what I realize through that loss is what I can do with it. And Dave knows I have this quote. Every day I get up and I say, "Okay, you know, I can be bitter or better," and today I choose better. And there's things that I do every. Every day to to set the foundation for being better. 
Um, you know, from the, from the loss standpoint, of course, not get into <laughs> too much of the detail. Uh, we lost our eldest daughter in 2011. Dave knows about that. And um, you know, in 2005, we lost our home in a fire. Everything we owned, and you know, those things turn out to be um, in in a very strange way. Obviously, we will miss our daughter. We know we'll see her, but. The fact is, we get the opportunity to help others in, in their loss because we get it, right? And so we can pour into each other and say, you know what, in the healing out of those tragedies is that path where you get to walk into other people's lives and encourage them to come out, right? Mm -hmm. And you can say, you know what, the sun will shine again, the light will turn on, you, you will one day laugh again and you will heal. It will never be the same. You will always have that hole. However, other things come in to start filling your life and, and you understand that there's a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where you and I talked about like finding what your why is. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, that, I mean, that's, you know, tragedy, can't imagine. I mean, I cannot relate. To those to those types of tragedies, and I know m many people on the call cannot relate to that. But I I think when you think of how do you I, we want to hear your why, but I would also just love to know you know some of your principles and lives and beliefs which might just set up your why that help you come out of that stronger than ever. Yeah, I mean you know it's no secret, Dave. You know I have a strong faith, right? And and so that is the rock for me, and understanding that every day that I give it over to God, I surrender, and I know the day is His, and I'm still here because of Him, and mm -hmm. I just understand that in the morning I set the foundation, and you know, some people call it the miracle morning, whatever it is, I'm setting my day up, usually start in the morning and have my devotion time, and and just quiet time, I'm journaling, I'm setting that that, that, that pace for the day, mm -hmm. and that, that makes the day go, and being grateful, just being so grateful for everything, for breath, for friendship, getting to sit here with you, for the beautiful view. I, I can't even tell you how excited I am to be at Sales Mastery and connect with people, right? That's a big part of it, is connection. Well, there, there's no doubt anybody that's ever met you, they know that you have a grateful heart. You know, I mean, that is just so contagious, so obvious that you celebrate the day and you celebrate people. So, I mean, that's something that, that I've seen. You know, you've said a number of things, you know, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but, you know, servant leadership and some beliefs that you have that, you know, create this why and also position you in a way that you can you can take adversity and you can, you can power through that. Talk about what um, servant leadership means to you a little bit. Well, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, our... I get to work for a company too that our heart is, is serving and, and serving to me is just making sure that I celebrate others in their success and that I am available for them, that our team is available. Um, it's the same in my home life, you know, that I, I serve my family, I serve my community, my, my friendships and, and just understanding that, you know what, just pouring into people, I mean, therein lies the why, because I get to see their, you know, joy and coming out of it and, and taking away from it things that might help them in their life. That is is serving for me. So let's net out. What What is your, you know, if I was to say, and as a mortgage professional, I mean, everybody on this call is a loan officer, a branch manager, a leader of, of, of mortgage professionals, but does that have to be your mortgage why? We'll get to that. Yeah. But what is the why that drives your work? Yeah, so I would just encourage the audience out there to, to, to really take a look at your story. Because I hear people all the time say, hey, Sarah, help me with my why, right? And so you can figure out your why if you understand your story and you, and you embrace your story. So I've embraced my story. It's painful. It's no fun. But you know what? I embrace it. And I embrace it because I know that therein lies my why of serving and helping others and giving back and making sure I make an impact. And, and as cheesy as it could sound to others, and I say this all the time today, my purpose today is that 
you know, I'm sitting with you, Dave Savage, and if I can touch you in one small way so that you walk out of this interview and you're inspired, you know, just pretending like it's just you and me having a beer, right? Mm -hmm. Or wine or wine. I just have my glass of wine. <laughs> or a club soda, okay. right? But that you walk away and you go, you know what, that was, that was really cool. And no matter what I face in my life, no matter how difficult it is, she said something to me today that I can come out of those things, whether it's cancer, whether it's a loss of a spouse, whether it's a loss of a job, whether it's, you know, I see this all around me where people have lost, right? I mean, 10,000, what is it? 10,000 people die every day. And, and, and through all that, there's a lot of grieving going on in our world. But if you can say to somebody, it's going to be okay. And guess what? I can, I can be an example of how you come out of that and be a better person. That's my why. Then you can start building the what around it. And the what can be, for me, I get to have the honor of coaching some amazing people. I get to inspire through our company in just very small ways. And I get to just cheer people on in their own successes, which is incredible. Does that help? It. It, it helps. And I hope, it, again, it helped me. I hope it helps everybody on this call. And, and when I think of you, Sarah, there's I, I can't remember the quote from Jim Carrey. I don't know if you ever saw. He did a commensurate speech. Did you ever see Jim Carrey's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, Not any, for a long time. It's yeah. been a while, but he yeah. made this, this, this comment that uh, the greatest gift or the most impact is is our impact on others. You know, it's what we bring. And, you know, the greatest currency is our, our impact on others. And you bring that. Cool. So so kudos to you. And I, I guess my takeaway for everybody on the mortgage coach side, you know, what is your story? You know, what is your adversity story? We all have one. You know, some of us have some, you know, some painful tragedies or more than others. But let's face it, we're human beings. Yeah. And we're, you know, we've got tragedy behind us and we have tragedy in front of us. Yeah. And, and what's yours? And then how are you turning that into something really positive and really clarifying? So let's transition because, you know, you've got, you call it your miracle morning. Uh, Hal Elrod, I hope you're listening to this. You know, I'm a huge fan of Hal yeah. and I've been interviewed him a few times. Go Hal. Because you have, you've coined that term, the miracle morning. Yeah. So, so let's. I don't know if we want to get, we don't necessarily need to get right to your morning rhythms, but let's let's talk a little bit about a couple of your takeaways, and then let's talk a little bit about your team. Yeah, yeah, so just um, to talk about the morning, one of the things that happened for me, you know, after we lost our daughter four years ago was uh, this elderly pastor who I did not know spoke something really powerful into me, and he said, you get to choose every single day what comes into your mind, um, you know, and there's there's a wonderful scripture that says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you decide how you're going to renew your mind. So at that point, Dave, um, a lot of people know this, but I turned off the TV, and I turned off pretty much all media for the most part, uh, no radio, no newspapers, from, from the standpoint of just controlling what was coming into my mind and beginning to actually just choose things that would heal my brain because at that point you do understand that the brain has been injured, right? There's stuff that happens through deep loss that um, just shifts your brain waves. And so beginning to change that, and, and I've always been an avid reader, but it became something I was just crazy about reading and things that I listen to, everything that I put into my mind. So the Miracle Morning now is is still the same. Um, very, very rare I watch TV. I Honestly, I just, I don't even know what's on anymore and I don't care and I don't feel like I missed anything. So you'll update me, right? If there's <laughs> yeah, so, so, you, so you have cut out media and you, yeah. you, you're fiercely controlling around what comes in to your mind, and, and, and you say you not only prescribe that for anybody that's going through a struggle or a challenge, I mean it's obviously more critical, but just for day-to-day -day healthy living, Yep. at least that's your formula. Yes, and then also controlling, you know, you become the average of the five people you hang around with, right? So I get to hang around with you, which is great. I get to hang around with, um, you know, Steve Jacobson, amazing people at, at our, our team, and I, I mean I control who's around me, right? And I control what's coming in, and 
get to get to pick every day. So just encouragement to folks out there just to just to be really careful. I had to be very, very selective, right? After the depth of loss, and I had uh, a wonderful therapist that said, you choose every single day what comes in. Make sure you make the best choice. Love, love that. Well, you know, you, you said something else when we were doing our preparation for this, but this is a, a term that you have, you know. Yeah, uh, so I have a, I, yeah, so I have this uh, thing of just kind of 12 ways to help other and be, be a construction zone, not a destruction zone, and, you know, just, just be humble. It's hard to tell yourself to, to live that way, but just always kind of come at things trying to listen to others, be an active listener, and, you know, speak 20% and listen 80%. That's easier said than done, at least for me it is. Uh, so, by the way, I had reached out to a few of your teammates and had asked them how they would describe you. I literally called Louise and said, you know, pop quiz, you know, Sarah Middleton, you know, passionate, always on, perseverance. Uh, I reached out to, to, you know, Amy, you know, uh, she responded via email, but Sarah's a, a leader who's experienced what you're going through. Her advice is always heartfelt, true, sincere. She's giving advice from a place in which she's been, which makes it inval invaluable. Um, she's made um, heart, oh, sorry. Uh, anyways, they say amazing things about you. And so that's another thing that I think is a great character trait, is presence. And something, by the way, I struggle with, you know, I am ADD. You know, it's in this world now, everybody's ADD. When I was in school, I was like one of the only kids that was ADD. Now it's like my people are everywhere. You're doing really good today, folks. Yeah, hey, you're, 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 you're doing it. You're doing you know, good. I think we live in an ADD world. ADD world. So, and, and I, you know, I don't think any of us have it like solved. We're always fighting. But what are some of your, what are some of the things you do to improve your presence from an intentional standpoint? Well, there's there, yeah, there's a practice to being present. There mm -hmm. really is, and. I, you know, again, I, I don't know much. Okay, so i have just yeah. You're not. We're just ripped We're not saying either <laughs> one of us are qualified to be teachers on this. No, you know, because we all are going well, fast. Uh, so, for me, my morning routine is critical. Right. It's critical, and it's um, spending time in. You know, I people know I have a strong faith, so I spend time in God's Word every morning, and I set the day by just my intentions. I also journal to just track what I'm doing, where I'm going, where my mind is. And um, just it's so important to set that day. I do a lot of uh, listening to sermons, mm -hmm. and I do a ton of reading, and, and that really sets that foundation for the day. And then at night, you know, the gratitude for what happened for the day, just a little gratitude list. And so you do that? You do that every, every day? Yeah, I'm grateful for you, Dave. Uh, I'm grateful for you, too. Yep. So, so let's go through your, you know, some of your rituals, some of your daily disciplines. If you could just give us the list, and I know when I talk to you, it is not only about how you start the day, but how you stop in the day. So why don't you walk us through some of your daily disciplines? Yeah, this is, this is kind of, um, you know, I, I'll never forget it. I had, again, this, this pastor after we lost our daughter, uh, he said to me, you choose every single day what comes into your mind and what you accept as your thinking. And so make sure that what you are choosing brings life every day. So I had to make a choice, and, and again, you know, I always, looking back, I mean, we've always been a part of Duncan and all the, the, the top-level thinking, but it became life or death for me, Dave, at that point, because you're, you're losing a child, you're so shattered. You would rather be boiled in oil, you would rather die yourself, you would give up everything to have that, that, that person back in your life. You, you would give anything, right? So every single day I had to be so clear about what was coming into my mind, what I was choosing, 
those practices have, have I'm so thankful I'm so thankful and it's not easy because you have to fight through it right there's all this stuff coming at you telling you how you're gonna think and you know the, the Bible says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind how do you renew it and how I renewed it was being positive right looking at the positive things that I was reading what I was hearing, people I was allowing into my life, people that had walked ahead of me, that had lost a child and who had triumphed and that were showing me the way, and then the naysayers, because again, there were people coming at me saying, you will never recover from this, and I had to say, no, no, I, I will, it'll be different, I will miss her forever, I will see her again, but every single day, I get to choose life or I choose death. Today, I choose life. So that morning ritual of, you know, reading and listening to sermons and, you know, beautiful positive music, turning off the TV. Again, people were telling me what was going to happen, and I had to say yay or nay, and I had to say yay to life and no to death. That helped. Yeah, abso absolutely. So... So, folks, you know, we really want to help you guys get as much value from this as possible. Again, different people are going through different struggles. Yeah. And as an industry, we're going through change, you know, massive change with TRID, and then everybody has their own personal backstory. You know, some of them are incredibly tragic. Some of them are just minor neighborhood things. I mean, I had, you know, yeah. just in the, you know, having, I have a teenage daughter. I have an eighth grade son, you know, just school, life, you know, the, there's, there's, there's stuff going on in everybody's life. Well, and you realize too, Dave, that, you know, loss, my loss isn't, to me, yes, it's, it's, it's terrible, it's tragic, whatever, but understanding and having that empathy for others in their loss, and it can be a loss of a job, it can be um, just even the shift with tread, it can be, again, those may seem very kind of superficial, but truly, those do affect people, and having oh. empathy always for that, and being present in the conversation, putting the ADD to the side, that, that is every day just something I try to be um, an active listener, right. and really hear you so that I can help you, right, mm -hmm. or you can help, we, we get to share. Right. So, so I, I advise everybody on this call, think about where are you right now from a you know, prepared for change, you know, change for the better, in a great state of mind. Again, a lot of folks on this call, you are apex performers, you're some of the best mortgage professionals in the country, and you, you know, you could be on this call sharing and leading with Sarah and I. For some of you, you know, you're struggling, you know, there's, there's, you've got a bitter attitude. I mean, I, after some of the, the last few weeks of trid calls, I've got tons of positive feedback, and I've had some emails from people that are just like, you know, Cut with the great attitude, trends horrible. You know the CFPB is you know just the worst. And you know what? Wow. I choose to put a positive spin, not only personally, but out there in the industry. You know, a good friend of mine who's you know typically a positive leader. Um, I saw him you know put a little trend bash out, and I'm just like, why? You know yeah. what? Trend, let's make it our competitive advantage. So, so, folks, I want everybody on this call to think, where are you at from a mindset standpoint? If you're not a 10, get to be a 10. We have, in this mortgage industry, we have no reason not to be. It's never been a better time to be in the industry. Uh, you know, when you think about what would people say about you as a leader, uh, here's some other things that, that uh, some of Sarah's peers and her boss said about her. I've, I reached out to a number of people. You know, how would you describe Sarah as a leader? Uh, everybody's like very competitive, very, you know, high sense of urgency. Tom Tusian, I've interviewed Tom a number of times on the mortgage coach calls. Oh. Sarah is the fastest to respond with the highest level of encouragement of anyone I've ever met. Oh. So Tom shout out to Tom. Thanks. Yeah, well. so so by the way, how how would your peers describe you? You know, I want everybody to ask yourselves, how would your peers describe you? Hopefully, it's what you want, the, how you want them to. And if it's not, think about that. What are we going to do to get into a place where we're we're in the zone? So, Sarah, in our pre-conversations, you said a lot of things that you know you've already had impact. Just the preparation for this interview had impact. Uh, this little quote you have: 
<laughs> What's your backstory on this one? Because I know I've used it like 10 times since you said it for the first time. Yeah, so, you know, today, in today's world, I mean, there's been so much study about sitting, and I say sitting is the new smoking. I move a lot, and, you know, just... I just feel better when I'm moving, and there's so much study that's behind it. And um, so, just to share a little bit about moving, getting up and moving, and it's it's so powerful for your brain waves. That was another thing that I learned through uh, tragedy, and I uh, had this, like I said, an amazing counselor therapist, and he told me, and I've always been really active. But he told me one of the most powerful things for my brain was to get moving and to move a lot. Our bodies, you know, you're just going to flip. Uh, Dr. John Rady, he's a MD, and believe me, I'm no, I'm no science, science wizard here, but he's out of Harvard, and he said our bodies were created to move, if you can believe this, 10 to 14 miles a day. And obviously, wow. I know, I know, right? So. So what happens is with when we're sitting all the time, there's different things that happen. A sedentary life, we're going to have ADHD. Oh, Dave. Oh, wait, are you trying to say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> time out for a minute. I also, want to, oh. I also want to highlight that Sarah came prepared. So she, you know, oh, before well, that, this interview. This is where your ADHD just kicked in. Well, I want to make sure that. over there. Well, that's you know, what you have in your hands? <laughs> no. Oh, that's a, she's got more paper. So, okay, go back, go so, back. So she, had, she came way prepared. With all types of notes. You are so funny. Okay, so his ADHD just kicked in there. I gotta go walk 12 miles. So right, no. So when when we're sitting, when we're sedentary, and this isn't, we're gonna talk about this, right? But when we're sitting, we have ADHD, higher anxiety, diabetes type two, lower academic achievement, depression, PTSD, addictions, learned helplessness, Alzheimer's. It is deadly to sit. So yeah. <laughs> Something I've, uh, you know, I've always been pretty active, but the last, um, I know people laugh about it, but I, I try to move around at least seven to eight miles a day. And, you know, I'll get on a conference call and I get up from my desk. How many steps I, is that? Because I know she has a Fitbit. Yes, uh, it's, it's, so actually, it's actually 15,878 to be exact. <laughs> wow. So, so wait, so, so I've been like, my goal is like 10,000, which I hit more times than not, but yes. your goal is 15? I try to hit 15,878 to 16,000 per day. And wow. Yeah, I know. So you just raised the bar on me. Yeah, I would just encourage people if you're, I mean, if you're not, you know, Hippocrates said if you don't, if you don't feel good, get up and go for a walk. If you still don't feel good, get up and go for another walk. Right? Right. I mean, yeah. it's so simple. I'm not a gym rat. I just go out, I walk, I, you know, I spend a lot of time in prayer and solitude and I, Saying a prayer for you, Dave, every once in a while, not all the time, but now that I'm looking at you with your ADHD, I'll probably do it Dave, now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't get too carried away. I know. I know. I know. I know. So, so, so walk more. Any, any other key facts just to get us up? I know, I know I've had a stand-up desk for years now. Love it. But any other just... Well, there's, I mean, there's a, there's a, a great book out. It's called The Sparkling life and it's by this doctor John Rady. He's 71 years old and it's just somebody I I got to meet at um, a retreat in uh, Tecate, Mexico, Rancho La Porta. And anyway, he just talks about how important it is to keep moving and then of course, you know, what you're feeding into your body. So, you know, the people who are around me know I drink this crazy green drink. I try to every day and it's you know, it's kale and parsley and lemon and I drink 24 ounces of that every morning if I can mm -hmm. again and you know when I'm traveling well, it's a little harder. I noticed you came in this morning and you had a lemon in your hand. Yeah. I'm in a hotel room and she's like oh you got a knife? <laughs> you know, so, so is that another one of your little moves? Yeah, you you I, carry I, lemons around? Yeah I drink lemon water every morning and nice. you know like I'm not, believe me though I'll eat dessert with the best of them. So. Hey hey you, you, we've got to. We've got to. Yeah I've got to enjoy life. So, so by the way, I am gonna, um, I'm not going to open it up for questions, but if you do have questions for Sarah Middleton, I am going to start trying to look for some of those questions and bring in questions from the audience. So submit that in the GoToWebinar environment. Uh, so Sarah, let's, let's, let's go where my ADHD wanted to go. Uh, when, we, when we were doing the prep, I, I was like, she was telling me about all these books that she reads, and I'm like, take a picture. 
I want to, <laughs> I want to show that to everybody because I'm highly visual pictures. And uh, and then she had mentioned how oh I just wrote down these twelve things that I want to make sure I share with everybody. So by the way, we got a picture from Sarah. Uh, so Sarah, let's go through your your twelve things to help others. And then again, everybody uh, submit some questions if you have them, and uh, we'll just keep this going. Oh, it's just I love to read. I'm just encouraging everyone out there to you know grab a great book and escape into it i i can't say enough about reading and and it just it has absolutely you know since i was a little girl i've loved to read but but especially um the last four years i've learned so much about grief and loss and tragedy and coming out of it and the, the wonderful stories i mean that's that's the stuff we love right we love to hear the the the, the sad thing that happens, the terrible thing that happens, and then, you know, the struggle through the adversity, right, and then the triumph, and then the rising out of it, and I mean, that's that's what great movies, Unbroken, and we could just go on and on, and so I would just encourage everyone, if you aren't a reader, just find one book. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm reading Voice in the Boat, which I love. Um, there are a lot of great things about that oh, book. Oh, it's just a great, it's a great book. And there's just so many fabulous lessons about team and how to build a great team and what it means to be a team. And, you know, it's not about one person. It's about everyone in that boat pulling together. And each person plays an important role. So anyway, now we're going to jump to, okay, so I have these kind of goofy rules about how to help others. And I doubt if they're going to be goofy. By the way, well, before you do the 10 rules, yeah. uh, Maureen wants to know what else is in that green drink besides kale, parsley, and lemon? Spinach. Ooh, and double green. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then to cut the bitter is a little bit of green apple. So my sweet husband, who uh, I'm going to do a shout out, I, I think he's listening today, uh, Mark, we've been married 20 years, he goes to Nectar and uh, gets over there at 7 a.m. and gets me a 24 ounce of that. And then when I'm trolling around the nation, I'm trying to find a, I, I'll go down to the, you know, the restaurant and just see if they'll blend up something for me, so pulp and all. There we go. So there's the answer to that. So I have got a few more questions. I'll sprinkle those yeah. in. Oh, and um, cayenne pepper in that Oh, drink. I like the cayenne pepper. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not going to ask this decision yet, but this is a great question. By the way, um, Angeline, thank you. Great question. Don't answer it. We're going to do these 12, but be All thank right. you about your answer. What is the most important decision you've ever made in your career and your personal life? So we're going to close up. Don't come. We're going to answer that at the end. Wow. Uh, yeah, so wow. <laughs> way to put us on the spot, Damn. Angela. Yeah. Yeah, so so let's do the 12 things yeah, and let's close yeah. with that. Hey, will you pull up my sweet? Oh, no, we're going to look at this. Oh, There's well, my well. ADHD. I just wanted you to see my sweet. Oh, uh, there we are. Oh, you guys are so happy. Oh, he's a, he's a gem. He's just a, he's a rock. Own your story, know your why, and now you can implement your life. Love it. Oh, okay, so, so here's just a... Um, I don't know. These are just little things that I definitely every morning try to try to live by through the day. So uh, number one, build up, never tear, tear down. Be a construction zone. Be a builder, not a destroyer. So just life works, right? Encourage others. Uh, I heard a study. This was really interesting, and it was uh, these scientists, and they took these giant vats of water, and believe it or not, one group spoke life words into the water. The other one spoke harsh, angry words into the water, and then they froze it. And it was unbelievable to see the picture. The life words was beautiful. It was just a beautiful picture of what this water had turned into. The other one was it was it was a horrific picture of just almost a shattered. So it's just a reminder that when we're with each other, if I can speak something into you, Dave, like what you do is amazing. How you're helping our industry is so powerful, right? To simplify the process for the customer. I mean, it's it's incredible. And people who don't use mortgage coach should, and you're not paying me for this little plug, but I'm just saying what you do, it's, it's, it's really powerful, and don't ever short sell the impact it's made in our industry, right? So, so life words into each other. Inspire. Be a breath of fresh air. Do I breathe life into you, or am I poking holes? 
I want to breathe life, right? I want you to walk away every day because guess what? When I'm breathing life into you, you're breathing life right back into me, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Raise up. Um, don't lower. Call folks from death. You know, there's so many people in our world that are just <laughs> plodding along in, a, in what I call the death zone. And if you can pull them out of that, that's a gift to ourselves. That's where our healing lies for our loss. Uh, cooperate, don't contend, work together versus tear apart. Um, I love that saying, it takes teamwork to make a dream work. It's all about the team. It always is, always has been, always will be. And just the impact and the, you know, the momentum you can get from being a team player. Uh, be a believer, not a doubter. I, you know, I believe wholeheartedly in mortgage coach, and I think you've seen that with, with our folks. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, love, don't hate, get outside of me, help others. Love is always expressed in giving. And so if I can pour into you, Dave, that makes makes for a good morning for me. I love this word, ameliorate. That's a new word for our audience out there. It was a new word for me, and it means to soothe. And so if I can come away from every conversation where maybe I've been a bit of salve for your loss, for for something you're struggling with, and I can mitigate it versus irritate, right? Add to, not subtract. If I add value, you know, that, that helps, and stay humble. Know that, that every day is the gift. I'm here because God decided I get to stay here for another day, and that's a good thing. Heal, don't wound, patch up, restore. So, you know, make a point of, adding restoration to people's lives in, in the everyday conversation. Correct, don't condemn. You know, I get to work for an amazing leader and there's so much that is incredible about him, but one of the things that I truly just value so much is he does um, correct me, but he does it in such a way that it helps, it never harms, and I'm a better person every time I come out of that conversation. And I'm so thankful for that. Same with my husband. He corrects me, right? And I want that from people around me. I want to be a better person. So just like with you, Dave, I want to be better. There's something I, like after we get done, I'll go, how'd I do? What could I have done better? How do I, you know, am I giving back? <laughs> That's to totally you. Enough? Yeah. That is you. Yeah, help, don't hinder. Every situation, how can I help others? How can I make your life better? How can I give to you? How can I pour into you? And I and that's it's really weird, but how our world works is if I give, therein lies my, my healing. Awesome. So I I again I have ADD, so I could do things that normal people can't do. <laughs> While I was listening very intensely and carefully, I I also blew up these uh, images so that everybody on this call could could see these. Um, as I told everybody at the beginning of the call, this is recorded. So if you missed any of these, you can go back and listen to the recording. You know, we are about 43 minutes into this. But I mean, I just thought these were awesome. I mean, 12, very strong. I, you know, as I listen to all of them, easier said than done. You know, I mean, the whole, even being, you know, encouragement, you know, I mean, as a father, you know, sometimes you'll, 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 you'll be encouraging, but on the back side of that, but you could have done this, or you should have done that. You know, so, I mean, easier said than done, but I think these are, are great reminders for everybody on this call. Uh, we, are, we are in a time of change in our industry. We are in a time of immense opportunity, and most of that is just a matter of your, your attitude, your why. Yep. You know, do you have a positive, positive attitude, and are you bringing your A game to every family that you connect with, and are you bringing your A game to every realtor that you connect with? So, Sarah, let's let's transition. Okay. Um, great adversity story. You you mentor and coach a lot of mortgage professionals. You've obviously become a, a, a huge evangelist and mortgage coach. I mean, there were times where you've always been a fan. Yeah. But it's different now. Yeah. I mean, you're not just a fan. You really are driving it to mortgage professionals. So, I mean, what is your what is your mortgage coach why now? Yeah, I think, you know, I, w I just want to encourage originators out there. You know, I think there's always a new shiny penny. There's always something, some new widget. And 
knowing Dave as long as I've I've known you, I would just encourage our audience to just pick a couple things and and get spectacular at a couple of things. And Mortgage Coach should be one of them. It's a simple way to sit down with your customer, explain, have the visual there for them, and you walk them through through the why and the different comparisons, and it's just so professional. And again, Dave, you're not telling me to say it. I've watched you morph over all these years. I was thinking, shoot, we met in 90, 93, right? 1993. Mm -hmm. And just watching the, you know, just the process of Mortgage Coach and how wonderful it is. Um, not that it wasn't in the beginning. Uh, don't you worry. Really we've grown. gotten better. We've gotten better. <laughs> you, we've all got right. You, you've really grown, and I, I just would say to every loan officer and manager out there, just adopt it, and and get your people to adopt it. Get them to be really proficient at it and incorporate it, so that the loan officer, the manager, becomes the expert, especially in today's environment with tread. This is another, I love TRED. I think it's great because it's taking us to another level of professionalism, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. I don't see TRED as, you know, yes, there's always going to be change. There's been change, right? I, I, every year well, there's something. There's something. 27 years of doing this, I'm like, okay, here we go again. This is great because, again, it takes us up another notch, right? Well, it it pushes us to improve what we do. So at the um, the CEO roundtable last night, yeah. you know, we had Darren Hardy, and I would say that I don't want to say fifty percent of the conversation, but a big topic was about millennials, and it was about how they want transparency, how they want authenticity, how they you know are technology driven culture. They they do life on their mobile devices. Right. You know, they communicate via text, Snapchat, Instagram. You know, and, and something hit me, you know, not only do we have TRID happening right now, which is a massive change for our industry, but at the end of the day, there's a massive change. Everything that millennials want, so does Gen X. Yeah. So does baby boomers. I mean, yeah. they all, we, we all want authenticity, transparency, and mobile devices. You know, I mean, I don't even want to look at websites that I can't look at on my mobile device. Right. So, so you know, for everybody on this call, because let's face it, we have an industry where the average age is over 50, you know, if we want to change, we've got to get smart with how we're using our mobile devices. So I would just push everybody, you know, use TRED as, you know, your excuse, but it's time to start um, delivering value to the families you serve on your mobile device. Yeah, absolutely. And, and get smart with that. So there's a lot of great tools to do that. So obviously here at Mortgage Coach, you know, we want you to train your realtors. You know, great script from Todd here. Uh, that he recommends that you teach your realtor that when they refer you to their families to you know ask the family has your lender provided you with the total cost analysis uh, this script around tip and and to me the the thing I love most about trid is that it it really the, the new measures make how expensive getting a mortgage really clear yeah it's crystal clear and now that positions you as a teacher as an advisor yeah. you know you're no longer an app taker if you embrace this change, you really are a teacher and a trainer. Yeah. So, uh, folks, we also put handouts. Uh, so click on the handouts. We, we put some TRID scripts. We released these for the first time last week's call. We have updated them a little bit. So re-download them. Even if you downloaded them last week, we have updated those. So um, let's get with that last question. We've got 10 more minutes. I'm going to look for some more questions. So if there is a question you guys want, uh, it's fair to answer, but let's let's go to that question. What is the most important decision you made in your career and um, personal life? Wow, that's very deep. Uh, the most important decision I've made in my personal life and my career is, um, you know, I go back to my faith, and it's that I know that I'm here for. A purpose and I, I you know I trust God and I serve God and everything I do every day and that is that's absolutely the most important there's something far greater than myself that propels hopefully each and every decision I make every day and that's to make an impact on every person I meet so that when you walk away from our conversation Dave I'm looking at you going I hope he's better because of 
our time together. That's my hope, and that you come away inspired. Love it, love it. So I would just add one thing that I, I've interviewed so many top performing mortgage professionals, leaders, and, and first of all, great answer, and that is your answer. But you know, the answer that they, that it doesn't get asked, but that they, it really separates the best from the rest, it's that decision with how they start their day, yeah. you know, and the decision you make, do you do your miracle morning or not? Yeah. And, and then, you know, there's so many people out there with, you know, a bitter heart or, you know, they just, and they're, and they're, and they're kind of just replaying the same day over and over and over. You know, they're not, you know, it's, it's sometimes not the big decision you make in your life. It's the big decision you make every morning. It's yeah. the biz, big decision you make before you go, bet, go to bed at night. And do you go to bed at night? at a time that serves your future, or do you go to, go to bed at a time at a night that doesn't serve your future? Yeah. I've had so many friends that have just taken their career to the next level just by improving those morning rhythms mm -hmm. and those evening rhythms. So, um, so folks, hopefully this was a valuable uh, 50 minutes with Sarah and I. Sarah, is there anything else you want to share with the mortgage coach community uh, while you have us all on the call here? Yeah, I think that, you know, the last thing is just always be willing to learn. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that each day I remind myself in the morning when I'm in my devotional time that, you know, we're here to learn and not to ever think we have the answers because we don't. And just to go into each day with, with an open heart and an open mind and learning over and over and learning new things and learning old things, relearning them again, right, Dave, as we go through another change in our industry and just embracing the change and understanding it's, I think TRID is an edge. I really do. I think if you embrace it and you understand it's going to take you to another level of professionalism, um, change, is, change is good. It's inevitable. It's going to continue to keep happening. And just get your arms around it and, and go forward just with a, a, you know, a positive outlook on it. Right on, guys. So, again, we're dedicated to training and education every day of the week at Mortgage Coach. There's something. Tuesday is interviews. Wednesday is all about mobile. So if you do want to become a mobile badass with Mortgage Coach, join me and Jacob uh, on Wednesday, and we'll teach you how to create cool things with our mobile app. It will teach you how to share great things with the Mortgage Coach mobile app. So join us um, for Mobile Wednesday. And then obviously with TRID um, in town, Thursday's call is more valuable than ever because we're doing TRID training with Mortgage Coach. So uh, hopefully it was a great day. Sarah, thank you very much. Hey, thank you for being a change maker. Yeah, right on. <laughs> uh, if you're on this call and you are here at Sales Mastery, make sure you come and say hi to Sarah and I. Let Sarah know what you thought of today's call and come up and give me a high five or a hug. Look forward to seeing a lot of yeah, you over the next of hugs couple of days. Await. All right.